Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about implementing security using the secured socket layer, the SSL configurations. SSL is one of my favorite topic. I think with my blog, I introduced my advanced concepts using this SSL. I can still remember I took a lot of days to create those three blog articles on that SSL. And this video is not going to be exactly like that blog article, but I'm going to add some more information to it. Okay. The first question that comes to our mind about the SSL is why SSL? First, it helps with the data encryption. When I say data encryption, we're also going to talk about encryption in the coming lectures, but on a high level, we can encrypt the data and then we can also decrypt the data because if you take any website like they will have a server and they will have a client right client can be like a browser so when you hit the server to access some resource it goes via the internet then there are chances that someone can eavesdrop someone can hack or someone can get access to that data so that is where encryption comes into picture so that is where encryption becomes a mandatory if you can encrypt any kind of sensitive data, that is no one can easily decrypt and get the data back. Only the client or the consuming party can decrypt when we use this SSL setting. And how this data encryption work is via the public keys and private keys that is part of the key store and that is also part of the underlying architecture behind the SSL. We will understand that very clearly but for now just try to understand that public key and private keys will be there and we can encrypt the data using the public key and, and with private key we can just decrypt the data. You can just think it of like that. The next is about the data integrity. Again, when we do the encryption, we make sure that the data will not get tampered by anyone, right? So no one can just get into the data or access the data or tamper the data. So the data integrity will be maintained. And if you take any kind of payment gateway, HTTP, yes, is the main thing when you want to send some kind of sensitive data. So with SSL, data integrity is maintained. And then about the authentication. SSL is also an authentication layer. So how this authentication work is, let's say a server, it has its own certificate and then client should trust those certificates. So that makes the authentication. Let's say if the certificates are not trusted, then the authentication fails. You cannot access the resource. I'm going to talk about this one-way SSL and two-way SSL in this lecture. Okay, the next point is about the trust. Whenever you see HTTPS in any kind of URL, it represents to data is encrypted, you have the right authentication set. So of course, it establishes a trust. And even in the browser, you will always get some notification if it uses HTTP instead of HTTPS or if the certificates are expired or there is some issue with HTTPS, you will also see some red mark saying that this website cannot be trusted. And the final is about the compliance. Definitely lot of organizations, they will need to have all those security features to apply with the compliance. They will also need to have the SSL. Now let's deep dive and see how this SSL works. First, the important participants of an SSL. So for an SSL, for sure, SSL can be implemented at client side and server side. So definitely you need to have a server and then you need to have a client and then certificates. So certificates will be exchanged across server and client and that helps to establish an authentication as well as trust. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say we have a server and that server needs to be accessed by different clients. Now, if the client needs to trust the server, it needs to have that certificate into its trust store. So that is where the below one comes in, the trust store. So trust store, what it refers is, it can be like a basket with list of certificates installed into their servers, their machines. Okay. Now server can have a certificate and normally these certificates can be signed by different CAs or certificate authorities. Let's say the server has a certificate and it is signed by GoDaddy as the certificate authority. And now if the client also in the trust store, if it has a certificate that is trusted by GoDaddy, then it means like this server can be trusted. And to go more into detail, certificates have the signing at root level and also at the intermediary level. So certificate, you will just find it like a hierarchy, a root and some intermediary nodes. And to make a trust, it needs to be trusted at different levels. Okay. Then what about this public key and private key? I already talked, it helps with the encryption. So also, even for the certificate, what they do is, 
they will sign the certificate with the public key and the same can be verified in the trust store so certificate signing can be done and also the data encryption can be done using this public key and private key and one more important thing to note is a private key of server will not be shared with the client only the public key will be shared then you may get a question why we need this private key just an example let's say uh, the server it shares its public key to the client so client when it sends a message it will sign with the public key of the server so server will only have the private key of the corresponding its own public key that will be signed by the client so when that comes in then easily server can use the private key to decrypt the similarly the other way around so client also can have public key private key public key will be shared and then server will send the message by signing with the client's public key and then when it reaches client client will use its private key to decrypt the data so that is how this public and private key is going to work they will also at the back and create some shared key to do this data encryption okay so this is on a high level these are going to be the participants now i'm going to show you how to establish these ssl connections using pega dsn studio and we'll also use postman as our client to access these ssl configurations let's get started as a first step what we are going to do is we need to establish the https connection the ssl configuration for our tomcat server and i already explained that in one of the lecture just a short recap if you go to the con folder and, and if you go to server.xml there you will find the configuration so i'm just opening the server.xml here i already added this for now i just updated this to use a different port because i already installed different server and it is using 8443 okay anyway 8442 is also going to work the thing is i have the https connection into 8442 and i am using a key store file that is under this directory under this course folder i have a new key store created and to create the key store i will provide the key tool command in the description of this video also in this lecture i'm not going to concentrate on using those key tool but i already explained it in my blogs and then in the previous lectures also i explained it so i'll keep it bit simple i already executed that so i have all those files ready in my folder let me quickly show you the folder so how it's going to be is under this key store course then i have my first thing the jks file the constellation 24 jks file i created it and then i also extracted a certificate out of it and then a key file out of it i use this same thing for my constellation course and then i created two more files the p12 file and the pem file which will be needed to establish some connection from the client side so totally i have now five files into my directory and let's quickly check this jks file so what you can do is you can also use terminal here and once you have the key tool it's very easy to list all the certificates so i'm going to use verbose list and then i'm going to say key store and give this path and yeah, i know this file name so this is the one certificate i have and if you look carefully i use this cn name to be local host make sure you use the cn name as the local host or your current domain so that is where i created and then these are all the structure so i have this and the alias name is pega c11n24 okay so i have this certificate into my key store right okay now i started my pega server okay now when i try to launch my https url 8442 i get this error like it is not secured as you can see it says it is not secured although i use https the main reason is they say error certificate authority invalid okay now there is one more concept you want to understand like you need to have a signed certificate right and who signs it that is a key thing there are some certified authority who can sign the certificates a trusted certificate authority godaddy is an example now i created this certificate locally so there is no signed certificate authority i don't want to pay someone to get a signed certificate just for this tutorial so i did a self signed so when i use self signed certificate into my tomcat server the browser is going to throw error because browser says that certificate authority is invalid now how to fix this is you go here and then go to the site settings privacy and security scroll down to security and then you navigate to the manage certificates now we are just going to import our certificate which will be of p12 file 
So browse, go to your key store location and make sure you upload P12 and not the other files. And the certificate store, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the trusted root certificate authorities. So I'm going to make this as a trusted root certificate. Go next, finish. You get a security warning. Yes, I accept it. Okay. Now if you go here and then just do a refresh, you're trusted now. You see, connection is secure. Now the browser will always say whoever presents with this certificate, it will be trusted by the browser. The place where we put right, that is more like a trust store for the browser. Okay. Now we made this secured in the browser, right? Now let's do one more thing. Let's access a API. So quickly, I'm going to show you which API I'm going to access. And this time I'm going to use Postman as the client. For now, we used browser as the client. We had some issues. We installed the certificate into the trust store. We had the issue solved. Now the same thing we are going to check it from a third party application. So you can think Postman as a third party application, be it a Java application or whatever application you can think of. We will use that and then try to see how it works. So I'm going to use the same kind of API which I used in the previous lectures. So out of the box API, I'm going to try to access outside of Pega. So this is the API. So I'm opening a Postman here. I'm pasting this, but I need to enter this node ID, right? So let me get the node ID. And then I just replace it with the right node ID. Okay. To the service package, I think I already opened it, the API service package. And there I'm going to check what type of configuration we have. I believe I set it up as basic authentication. Let me quickly verify it. So it is basic authentication, TLS, SSL be there. Now if I hit it for the first time, what happens is I did not get any response. The first thing it says there is a self-signed certificate. So I'm not going to trust. So Postman is not going to trust. Same kind of thing which we saw in the browser, right? Because it's a self-signed. No CA authority signed this certificate. So we can do two things. We can just disable the SSL verification because Postman is again more like a testing tool or kind of a debugging tool. But I'm not going to do that. I want to mimic the exact application scenario. So I want to use this SSL for sure. So I'm not going to disable this. But instead, what you can do is you can go to the settings and then go to certificate. There you can use the PEM file to have the CA certificate. Again, I have that already the PEM file I created using the key tool. So I'm going to use this now. So this PEM is created out of the keys and certs of the JKS file which I created. So I'm using the same kind of certificate, same kind of keys and I created P12 PEM. So this is PEM that responds to the same keys and certificates which I used in the server, right? So this is more like the trust store. So trust store will hold all these CA certificates and now we are also saying that this should be trusted. The local host should be trusted. Now if you send this request, you get the authorization for sure. So you have to use a basic authentication and then do a send. So we'll get the response, 200 response. Okay, now we successfully implemented the SSL. We are able to use the SSL configuration from a third party postman to access Pega data, right? We had some issues, then we trusted the certificate and it works well. So this is all about the one way SSL. Now to put back the one way SSL, how one way SSL works is server will have its SSL certificate installed. SSL will be enabled in the server. Localhost, we enable that. That is the first point. The second point is the clients, be it browser, be it postman. When it want to access this HTTPS, when it want to access the resource, what goes at the back end is server will present its certificate to the client. That's the first step. When the client receives the certificate, the browser and the postman, it needs to check its trusted store to see if this certificate is signed by a valid authority or if this certificate can be trusted or not. Earlier, both browser and postman didn't trust it because we never have that self-signed authority into our trust store of the browser and postman. Then we imported for the browser, we use the P12 and for the postman, we used PEM, but in turn, it refers to the same certificate, same public keys. And after that, the trust is made. So this is one way SSL. So with one way SSL, what you mean is server will have the SSL configured. It will present its certificate and client needs to trust those. So whoever trusts those server certificate can make the connection. Okay. So what about the two way SSL or the mutual SSL? 